Hello again. This is a continuation of the Odyssey Siemens project. We've pretty much configured the hardware at this point and I'm going to continue on with creating some organization blocks or OBs and some FCs and we'll kind of see where this takes us. I mentioned in the last video that this is a good time to possibly download the hardware into the simulator. The simulator is started here with this little icon. I made the mistake when I first started programming Siemens of trying to go down here into the startup menu and start the simulator down here and no matter how hard I tried when I tried to do it from here it never worked properly so I always open the simulator here from this icon. When I do that you will see a little simulated PLC pop up and it always pops up in the last configuration that you had it and at that point uh, if you've configured your hardware properly you should be able to download it into the simulated PLC. I mentioned before that you're gonna have a lot of windows open in Siemens this is an example we've got the hardware open at this point we've got the manager open which we pretty much always have open and then we have this simulator open here. The simulator has a uh, stop and run command here, little check boxes, and of course it has some inputs, outputs, analog inputs, and analog outputs. Now these are the whatever was configured for the last project that I had open, which doesn't necessarily match this one. So we'll take a look here at the hardware configuration, look at these addresses again, and we'll just go in and match. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to close all these I.O. points and go ahead and open them again so that you understand how that's done. Um, so for an input card, there's a little icon up here and it looks like, see it says ins insert input variable. So if I bring that up, it shows a zero, which is what we've got here. The inputs are at I0, so that should be fine. It shows only eight inputs, that's the first eight. Uh, fact is, I could open another input card and actually change it to an output card. So even though it shows as an input icon here, if I type in QB uh, and then type in a 4, just like this down here, then I will get Q4.0. So you see I changed an input card into an output card. I can pretty much change anything to anything. So well, what the heck, I'll pull another one. and We'll pull an output card out this time. Let's double click it, there we go. I double clicked it so I got two of them. And that's okay. Uh, for analog, uh, there's a couple different ways that you can display your analog. But if I put in this address down here, PIW, so process input word 288 for the entire word, 288. Uh, obviously I, I'm not going to show the bits, it just shows it as decimal, but one of the cool things about Siemens Simulator is that I can also make it a slider. Two different kinds of sliders. This one goes negative and positive. Um, we'll use this one. This would simulate something like a negative 10 volt to positive 10 volt signal. And we want to stay on the positive side most of the time. But again, it's a simulation, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, on this one, it's going to be a PQW for process output word. I look at my address down here, and you can see that it starts at uh, 304. So we'll go ahead and make it PQW 304. The only thing we really care about here is, once again, the number that comes out of it. Um, you don't want a slider or anything like that. So uh, this will simulate something like a voltage output 0 to 10 volts and this will simulate a voltage input 0 to 10 volts and we'll do some scaling and things with it later. And then of course here if I want to turn on inputs I just put little check boxes in there. So it's just like pushing a button on a trainer. Now I want to do my uh, compile my program so there is a save and then there's a save and compile and we always want to save and compile. 
you won't be able to download if it just uh, saves. So then I hit download and immediately it's going to start browsing for whatever PLC I have. So if I say OK, you see that it shows the address that I configured in my processor here. And you notice that it also shows CPU 841. It always shows that for a simulator. So this is not a real PLC. This is a little fake PLC, but it's a pretty awesome one. It works very well and it remembers the address that I configured in the hardware here and then downloads it to the simulator. You have to of course have the simulator open when you do this. So I'm going to say OK and you notice that it kinda did a little bar graph there and it's it's in there and we're gonna test that it's in there but I'm pretty sure that it, everything's right and so at this point I have saved, I have compiled, I have downloaded so I can close my hardware. So at this point we're kind of back to the original project that we had. The difference here, we already did our hardware. There's a couple other things that have populated in here automatically. There's a little connections tab. There is a symbols table. We'll be using this extensively. And it even gives me my first block, which is OB1. OB1 is the main routine in the program. It is a special block. All OBs are special blocks. That's the way I like to term them. OB1 has a special purpose. Its special purpose is the same as all main routines. It runs all the time continuously. So that's what we're going to do with OB1. We're going to treat it as a main routine. We're going to call all other routines from OB1. A little bit about the different kinds of things that you can insert into a Siemens uh, program. You have OBs or organizational blocks. You have functions and function blocks. They are different. A function is really just like a subroutine. A function block is like a subroutine with permanent memory assigned to it. That permanent memory is in the form of a data block. And a data block is just a group of data. You can group different types of data and put it in your data blocks. It's a very useful feature of Siemens, a little bit different than the Allen Bradley stuff we've done. Then you have data types, which are UDTs, and you have variable tables. Variable tables are very important. They are the only way that you can change data uh, in a PLC. You can monitor it and you can change it. So you can't just type it in in the editor. You have to use a variable table to change the numbers. So this is a little older software package than things like your RS Logics 5000 or 500 even. Uh, so it really goes back a ways and has some kind of archaic ways of getting things done. But that's what the variable table is used for. So we've got an OB in here. If I double click it, it will open it for the first time. And this is my opportunity to name it. You notice also here, we're going to be getting pretty extensively into some of these other languages. Uh, I have choices as to which language I want to create this in. And ladder is very common in the United States, but in Europe, statement list is very common. And I'm going to be covering statement list quite a bit. Um, there are certain things that you can only do in statement list. And then this is function block diagram. So these are three of the IEC 61131 languages that are available. And there are two more and we don't have access to them. I don't have a license for those so I can't use uh, the structured text equivalent which is called uh, SCL which is structured control language. And I also don't have access to the SFC which is the Siemens version of sequential function charts. They call it S7 graph. So we're going to stick with ladder I'm going to name this main for main routine. I say OK, and it should bring up the editor. There is the editor. Again, multiple windows open here. I have the editor open at this point. I have the manager open at this point. And of course, I have my simulator open. We'll do a quick test here and make sure that our simulator is working properly. <clears throat> 
simplest possible logic that you can put in a PLC pretty much certainly the simplest logic that you can put in a Siemens PLC you must always have a contact and a coil in Siemens you can't put a just a coil hanging out there like you do in Allen Bradley but I'm going to use the IO that we have here in this simulator which is I input byte 0 and output byte 4 I'm going to use uh, I zero dot we'll try two and I'm going to use Q four dot three I'm not going to name them yet we'll save that for the next routine very simple here I save it and one of the differences between Siemens and Allen Bradley is that when you download so I'm going to do a download here you do not stop the processor the processor continues to run if it was running already which in this case it was not quick note on the simulator you do not put it in run mode if you put it in run mode you can't download to it and it will kind of give you a strange message and you won't be able to figure out that that's what your problem is but if you put it in run P you can see here the simulator going into run mode no faults or anything I do a download again even though I did it before it says it already exists this is a kind of a sign that we that our last download worked and at this point I can actually monitor this so a few things to notice about the monitoring this shows that input 0 2 is off and output 0 or 4 3 is off and that I'm in run mode and you can actually see it kind of scanning here quick test of the logic I'm going to turn on I02 and notice that it does respond here and Q4.3 comes on so this is a really good test to make sure that you're able to download and that things are running so I think that's going to be the end of this video that's a good quick test you can see me turn off and on the input if I turn on a different input, of course it doesn't do anything over here, but this is showing that Q4.3 is on, responding to I0.2. Thanks a lot. That should do it for this video, and we will continue on in the next one.